Welcome back to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Our next guest is running for Congress in Pinellas County, Democrat Eric Lynn. There are four other candidates in the race for Florida's 13th Congressional District. Anna Paulina Luna won the August Republican primary, and Frank Kraft is with the Libertarian Party of Florida, and there are two qualified write-in candidates, Dwight Young and Jacob Daniel Kerno. WMNF invited Anna Paulina Luna on the show, but her schedule wrote she has another interview scheduled at the same time. Eric Lynn joins us now by Zoom. Welcome back to WMNF, Eric. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, I'm glad you could join us on the show because the election this year is really important and we're going to try to get on as many candidates as we can in the remaining couple of months, uh, month or so that is. So um, you want to represent parts of Pinellas County in Congress. Tell people more about yourself and why you want to be a member of Congress. Absolutely. First, I couldn't agree with you more that voters in Pinellas County deserve to hear about my background and about my opponent's background and what we stand for. I'm a native of Pinellas. I'm a proud graduate of St. Petersburg High School. I worked for Secretary of Defense as a senior advisor, and those are Secretaries of Defense of both parties, Republican and Democrat. I'm running as the common sense centrist candidate in this race to follow in the footsteps of so many members of Congress that represented Pinellas County that have brought things back to this community and stood up for the values that people here in Pinellas County share. My priorities in this race are making sure that we combat inflation and have an economy that works for everyone, that we protect a woman's freedom to choose and of course, we support our veterans and protect our environment. Uh, you know, what I wanna say here is, unfortunately, my opponent is way too extreme for this community. It's a shame she didn't agree to uh, come on the show with you here, Sean, because then you'd be able to ask her what her policy positions are. Uh, but she's called herself an extremist on a number of issues. And it is disappointing that she's not willing to uh, express what her opinions on those issues are. But I do want to just share good news because you asked how the race is going. Uh, first, most importantly, the most recent poll uh, done by an outside group shows that we are leading in this race by two points, 45-43 uh, uh, over Anna Luna. Uh, and I also want to add that we just finished a fundraising quarter uh, here, and we had an excellent fundraising quarter uh, where we raised over a half million dollars, and we have now uh, raised over $2 million for this campaign to make sure that our message can get out and the people of Pinellas know that I'm the centrist common sense candidate uh, in this race. Our guest is Eric Lynn, who is running as a Democrat for Congress in Pinellas County. A caller, uh, sorry, an emailer asked us a qu this question in the first half of the show, and it was on my list of things to ask you as well. The federal response to Hurricane Ian, what would you say has been uh, the federal response so far? Yeah, great question. First, let me just say that uh, our heart goes out to those in Southwest Florida, particularly in Fort Myers uh, and the Port Charlotte areas that have been hit so hard in Sanibel Island as well. And we need to do everything we can as Floridians to come together to help the victims of Hurricane Ian, but also as Americans. And I'm thankful to first our local leaders here in Pinellas who prepared uh, for the storm potentially coming here. And while well, we got high winds and, and rain, and unfortunately, uh, folks like my neighbor had a tree fall through their roof, they have not seen the devastation uh, that we saw in Southwest Florida. But I want to commend uh, Mayor Ken Welsh of St. Petersburg and Mayor Frank Hidrid of Clearwater, uh, as well as the Pinellas County Commission uh, for all of their work in, in preparation. Uh, your question was about the federal response. And so far, uh, I have heard from, and it looks like FEMA uh, is doing uh, what they can to help with the necessary support for Floridians. Uh, and obviously, this recovery is not going to happen overnight. Uh, we cannot let up in continuing to push FEMA to continue their help uh, for those in the Sunshine State that have been hurt. Um, I do want to add what's most shocking to me is that when a vote came up in Congress, to ensure that there is hurricane support relief funding for Floridians after Hurricane Ian. Florida House Republican members of Congress, particularly those that my opponent Anna Luna calls her close friends and supporters, voted against the support from the federal government to 
hurricane victims and for hurricane relief. You can go and check the vote yourself. But Matt Gates came here to campaign for Anna Luna. He voted against it. Other good friends of Anna Luna's, Byron Donalds, who represents the area that was hit in Southwest Florida, voted against hurricane support. And then of course, the most extreme people that Anna Luna has brought here to this district because it's who she hopes to be like in Congress, Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert voted against hurricane support for victims of Hurricane Ian here in Florida. It is wrong, it is shameful. We cannot afford to have extremist representation like that, not in Pinellas, not in Florida, and not anywhere in the United States. Our guest is Eric Lynn on WMNF. He's running for Congress in Pinellas County. And just to that point that you were just making that, uh, I'll read here from The Hill about a recent government funding vote in the US House. Representative Matt Gates says he wants Congress to approve additional funds to help the state recover from Hurricane Ian after, after he voted against a government funding measure last week that freed up nearly $19 billion in federal disaster aid. Gates joined 15 other Florida lawmakers in voting against the continuing resolution that allows the government to remain funded at the current spending levels through mid-December and includes a new round of funding for Ukraine as well as for disaster aid, President Biden signed the bill into the law hours before a government shutdown deadline. So uh, let me play devil's ad advocate. Maybe maybe people like Matt Gates are saying something like, well, we should fund disaster relief by itself and not make it part of this big resolution, this continuing resolution and part of Ukraine aid. What's your response? My response is you can't have your cake and eat it too, Sean. Part of being a legislator and working in government to help people means that when you have the opportunity to vote to help people that are victims of a hurricane, they lost their homes. Many, unfortunately, lost their lives. And right now, they need all the help that they can get. Matt Gates is playing political games, as she usually does. And of course, he's supporting my extremist opponent, Anna Luna, who wants to play those same political games. My answer is, if you have an opportunity to vote for funding to help people that are losing their homes, that are losing their lives, they need the support necessary at that point in time. Also, I just want to add, my opponent has voted against a bill that was so important, said, excuse me, stated that she would vote against a bill that was so important to help so many in our community here and around the country, which was helping veterans and victims of toxic burn pits in Operation OEF in Afghanistan. Uh, I was in Afghanistan, as you know, and OIF in Iraq. And that bill came forward, supported by bipartisan Republican and Democrats in the House and the Senate. And Anna Luna went on television and said, I would have voted against the PACT Act if I were in Congress. I raise that with you now, Sean, because you cannot talk about voting against helping people and then pretend later on that you want to help people. You must vote for it when it comes up in order to be able to help them. That's true for hurricane funding. That is true for veterans. And for Anna Luna to go on TV and say she would have voted against veterans and to Matt Gates, Matt Gates to say that he did vote against hurricane victims, you cannot say you want to help people after you just voted against them. Our guest is Eric Lynn, who is running for Congress in Pinellas County. He's a Democrat, and you're listening to WMNF Tampa's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Uh, one last question about Hurricane Ian response, and we talked about the federal response, but what about the state's response to, this, to the disaster? And whether it was prepared ahead of time, there has been criticism that Lee County only issued evacuation orders a day before the storm hit. Yeah, Sean. So, you know, I said at the top that I really want to commend the Pinellas County Commission uh, and our local leaders here, uh, led by uh, Commissioner Charlie Justice and others. Uh, they put out uh, the appropriate warnings and evacuation requirements uh, for those that were in flood zones here in Pinellas County, uh, and people were able to evacuate. Obviously, we know the storm turned to the south, uh, and I have heard the criticism of uh, the Lee County officials. Uh, I would say that we need to look at the timeline as to when they knew what they knew. Um, and I hope that they certainly would have uh, put the evacuation orders in place uh, when they were necessary. Uh, but I'm focused right here in Pinellas uh, on this community. And we 
follow the leadership of the Pinellas County Commission, and I'm appreciative that they came out with their evacuation orders in the time uh, that they did for people living in flood zones. Uh, and uh, obviously, while there was some uh, damage here, we have faced nothing uh, like they faced in, in Southwest Florida, and we need to do what we can to help uh, those communities now. Eric Lynn, in your introduction at the beginning of the segment, you said that you were appointed by President Obama to serve as senior advisor to the Secretary of Defense in the Obama administration. And your campaign website says he was proud to fight for equality, working to end the don't ask, don't tell policy of the U.S. military that discriminated against service members for who they love. Why is that something that you work to end? Yeah, great question. Uh, so you're correct. I served as senior advisor to uh, Republican Secretary of Defense Bob Gates and Democrat Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta. And we did work to end the discriminatory policy known as don't ask, don't tell. Uh, and that's because no one should be told that they cannot serve their country because of who they love. At the time when we worked to end that policy, uh, there were a number of uh, polls taken within the U.S. military about uh, this situation. And of course, there were some naysayers who felt that there was a problem with morale in the military. And what those rank and file military uh, interviews and polls showed was that rank and file military members, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, did not care who members of their fighting force went home to at night, who they were living with, married to, raising a family with. What they cared about was, are they dedicated soldiers to defend the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic? And they were, and it was the right thing to do to end that policy that was discriminatory and to tell people that you should not, or excuse me, that you should be able to serve your country no matter who you love. Our guest is Eric Lynn, a Democrat running for Congress in Pinellas County. You're listening to WMNF's Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. Eric, we're going to talk about some of the priorities that you mentioned earlier in the show, but we just got an email that I should um, I want to ask you about because this was this topic was on my list of things to talk to you about, and that's the conflict in Ukraine, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Quinn writes. And he has a 727 area code, you should know. He says, I'm a young hippie. As a GIS analyst, I'm working on, a, on a collecting specific features over Ukraine. How will we achieve peace? Will the pressure of gas prices change your position? Will I be drafted if all goes to hell? So that's, those are some of Quinn's questions, apparently, in either Pasco or Pinellas. Excellent. Well, I'm glad we had the opportunity to discuss Ukraine. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, I was proud uh, to serve as a senior advisor to the Secretary of Defense at the Pentagon, where I had the opportunity to advise uh, our military leadership as well as our troops and to ensure that our national security is doing what the Constitution states that it should, which is to defend the United States and our national security. Now, at this point in time, we have a tyrant in Vladimir Putin. He has chosen to go to war. That is why you hear everyone in the military call this a war of choice, because we in the United States do not choose war. We choose peace, but we always defend ourselves with the strongest military in the world. The people of Ukraine democratically elected their leadership. Vladimir Putin is trying to violently take over his neighbor, and we in the United States will stand with the democratically elected government of Ukraine. I need to point out here something that you mentioned earlier in the show, Sean, that not only did many Republicans in the Congress vote against continuing assistance to the nation of Ukraine, but my opponent, Anna Luna, has also spoken out against assistance to Ukraine. We must help people that are being attacked by a tyrant in Vladimir Putin. We must assist the Ukrainians in defending themselves. And anyone who says they're going to vote against that does not understand the United States national security, does not understand the world and how national security works vis-a-vis -vis the United States and the world. Now, to some of the questions that I think uh, your, your caller or uh, emailer asked, um, how are we going to make peace? Uh, I certainly support efforts uh, towards peace in Ukraine. I believe that we need to have the United Nations and other organizations push the Russians to continue the negotiations with the Ukrainians on ending this conflict. The Russians chose to start this war, and now they must choose peace. 
to move forward with it. We've seen the Ukrainians make some significant gains uh, in the past uh, few weeks, and we know that Vladimir Putin uh, has himself called up a draft in Russia because uh, of significant problems with their military effectiveness. Uh, your caller or emailer asked if I believe there'll be a draft in the United States, uh, and the answer to that question is no. Uh, we have the most powerful and most effective military in the world. It is an all-volunteer force. Uh, some of the bravest and most talented men and women that I was proud to work with when I served as a senior advisor to the Secretary of Defense in the Pentagon. And I can tell you that the soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines who continue to defend this country uh, are going to do so on a volunteer basis, and we appreciate everything that they do. Our guest is Eric Lynn. He's a Democrat running for Congress in Pinellas County, and you're listening to WMNF Tampa 88.5 FM or WMNF.org. This is Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. And Eric, earlier you were talking about some of your priorities. So let's start with one that's on the minds of a lot of voters in 2022, and that's the overturning of Roe versus Wade and abortion access. What are your thoughts about that and what Congress might be able to do? Great question. Listen, in the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe versus Wade, the Supreme Court overturned 50 years of rights that have been afforded to women to have the freedom to make their own healthcare decisions between themselves and their doctor, not to be forced by government or anyone else to be told what they can or cannot do with their bodies. It is a very extreme rollback of rights. And what we need to do is ensure that those rights are afforded to women here in Pinellas County, in Florida, and across the country. The way that we can do that is by codifying the rights that Roe afforded in federal legislation in Washington by the United States Congress. I have committed to vote for the codification of the rights that Roe afforded. And I can tell you today, Sean, and I want to tell all of your listeners, anyone who feels that a woman deserves the freedom to make her own healthcare decisions about her body needs to vote for Eric Lynn for Congress in this election because my opponent is not just someone who says casually she opposes abortion rights. She has described herself on video as a pro-life extremist. She stands for banning all abortion rights with no exceptions. That means, Sean, no exceptions for victims of rape, no exceptions for victims of incest, and no exceptions to save the life of a mother if her health is in danger. That is barbaric, it is extreme, it is wrong, and it does not represent the views of the people of Pinellas County. The most recent polling shows that six in 10, over 60% of voters in Pinellas County support the rights that Roe afforded and a woman's freedom to make her own decisions about her body. That is what the community supports. That's why I'm the common sense centrist candidate in this race. Uh, and that's why your listeners need to vote for someone who's gonna stand up for those rights. This is Eric Lynn, a Democrat running for Congress in Pinellas County. You're listening to WMNF 88.5 FM. Another priority that you mentioned, Eric, is economic security. On your website, it says that you will protect and expand social security. How will you do that? And why do you think that social security needs protection and expansion? Yeah, great question. Uh, if I can, I know you want to talk about social security and I do as well, because it's so important to, to protect the social security of our seniors. We all know how many seniors live here in Pinellas County uh, and social security is our, our funds that people have paid into for their entire lives. They deserve to receive them uh, as uh, they become uh, of age to, to receive social security. And we can talk about that in a minute, but you mentioned an economy that works for everyone in economic security. And what I wanna say here is that we must combat the inflation that our country is experiencing. What I have stated the ways to do that. First is by lowering middle-class taxes. Unfortunately, hello, the tax hello, cut hello, that hello, Donald hello, Trump hello, hello, has pushed hello. forward on and that hello, 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 Anna hello, Luna has hello, stated she supports. Me? Am I there? Okay is a tax cut for the wealthy. We need middle-class tax cuts. <laughs> Second, we have to lower healthcare and prescription drug costs. 
to where you're going as you know to Vermont. so many seniors here in our community are paying way too much for their prescription drugs i just talked to a woman this past week who said that she has to make a decision at the end of the month whether she is going to buy her prescription drugs that she needs in order to stay healthy or to go to the store that week to buy her groceries and her food. That is wrong. It should not take place in Pinellas. It should not take place in Florida or across the country. And that means we need to negotiate those prescription drug costs. There are now ways that we can negotiate some prescription drugs, but we must be able to negotiate many, many more. Now, one final piece. We have to incentivize training for the supply chain delays that we're facing right now in our economy. As you know, there was a huge supply chain delay, particularly coming out of Asia when China shut down fully, most recently uh, for their COVID problems about four months ago. That has led to a backlog in the supply chain, but we have our own backlog in the US supply chain because once those container ships come to port on the East Coast and the West Coast of Florida, those containers are unfortunately staying on those ships for way too long. If you go to a port in the United States, you will see container ships and the containers are staying on. That's because we need more longshoremen to be able to take those containers safely off of those ships and put them on the trucks. And we need more truck drivers to be able to drive those containers with the goods down here to Florida and to across the United States. The way we do that is by incentivizing people to become and train so you definitely need serious training to have these excellent jobs, longshoremen and truck drivers. That's tax incentives, that is breaks on the training courses. And there is a need to continue to increase our supply chain employ employment. And we have to put Americans back to work. That's how we end this supply chain delay. Now, sorry for that long answer, but let's come to Social Security. Let me remind Social people Security. before you talk about Social Security Please. that you're that we're speaking with Eric Lynn, a Democrat running for Congress in Pinellas County, and this is WMNF 88.5 FM. So yes, tell us about Social Security and your plans for saving it. Absolutely. So Social Security is not an entitlement. It is a fund that every working American has paid into for their entire lives and deserves to receive when Security that we can fix to help save it uh, and to help so many across Pinellas County. First, we need to end the penalization of widows and widowers for having two incomes. We need to end the five month waiting period. We need to extend the Social Security dependent benefits. And we also need to reveal, excuse me, we need to repeal some programs that are hurting our Social Security recipients right now. Uh, known as WEP and GPO. Uh, there is currently a bill in Congress uh, by my friend, Congressman John Larson in Connecticut, and we need to make sure that that bill gets passed in order to protect Social Security. Uh, and I will support that, uh, hopefully, uh, as the representative, uh, if elected here in Pinellas County. Well, uh, before the end of the show, I want to ask people, Eric Lynn, where they can go to get more information about your campaign. Great, great question. Please go to ericlynnforcongress.com. That's ericlynnforcongress.com. You can read more about my priorities in this race. You can sign up to volunteer. We have a large group of volunteers every weekend as we go knock on doors and evenings uh, as I walk and knock on doors uh, with those great volunteers. And of course, uh, every campaign uh, is expensive to make sure that we get our message out. And on that website, you can support our campaign. Every $5, uh, every $10 helps. Eric Lynn for Congress. Dot com. Thank you for that, Sean. Well, thank you so much for coming on WMNF's Tuesday Cafe, Eric. Thank you for having me. I'm proud to be the common sense centrist candidate here in this race and look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you. Eric Lynn is a Democrat running for Congress in Pinellas County. Election Day is five weeks from today, Tuesday, November 8th. You can also vote by mail or vote early in person. For more information on your county's supervisors of elections website has that information and also the deadline to register to vote in this election is a week from today tuesday october october 11th and i want to thank as well my other guest jimmy dunson if you missed either of these segments you can watch them beginning this afternoon on wmnf.org thanks to our phone screener greg 
You've been listening to Tuesday Cafe. I'm Sean Canan. If you like the programming on 88.5 FM, please consider making a donation at WMNF.org. Our fall membership drive begins on Thursday. In this time slot tomorrow is Midpoint. And next up is Wavemakers with Janet and Tom Sherberger. Their guest today is Patrick Bentega, the publisher of La Gazzetta newspaper that's coming up after NPR headlines. You're listening to WMNF Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota, Clearwater, Lakeland. Thanks so much for listening.